Every hero needs a villain. In their search for the mask of creation, the Toa must face enemies raised from the dead. This is Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 7, The Ultimate Skull Grinder Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Today is the final day where we'll be taking a look at the Ultimate Skull Grinder. Now this is another combination that doesn't have an official name, so I gave it one. As this is mostly Skull Grinder powered up using parts from Skull Scorpio and Akimu the Mask Maker. I'm calling it Ultimate Skull Grinder, or Skull Maker, whichever you want. So this combination is pretty darn cool. i got to say I'm really impressed with this thing. The instructions for it uh, is 87 steps which is a lot for, an, for a modern day Bionicle set. It is by far the most complicated set to build. And that's probably because they put the leg uh, building instructions as separate things, and they take about 20 steps or so each. So there is that. But this thing is really, really cool. I'm going to get my biggest complaint out of the way. The arms look tiny. The arms look very tiny. They built up the legs and the torso so much, the arms look very, very tiny. Um, I would probably go back and fix that a bit. Um, it's because you get these bone pieces you can't add any armor or anything like that. But this is a very nice combination using a lot of the parts for uh, the each of the sets. There's not much left over for this one. There's more left over for the slicing bashing skull warrior. Now as you can see it does wear the mask of creation which is pretty cool. Um, as well as having this really intricate leg design. This is very reminiscent of old Bionicle Titans. As you can see, it's got ball joints upon ball joints upon ball joints to make sure everything is solid and sturdy. And this all moves in tandem so that you can actually get the full uh, range of movement pretty much. Which is pretty nice overall. Now you'll notice on this side you do have a staff weapon. Now I do not like the way the official mode is because the blades here and the blades here I get it, it's supposed to be a mass cook but I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this around because that looks a lot more impressive he also does retain a gear function but this arm only which is smart because this other arm is too heavy for a gear function so that's pretty neat as you may notice he's got the horns which means knocking the mask off is pretty easy um, I almost wonder if that's intentional if the toa can reach his head you might as well knock his mask off. Speaking of knocking masks off though, this actually features a mask grabber. Now this is a longer version of the staff. You can see it uses the rubber band from Scorpio and his blades. And it is pretty cool. And we'll test it out here in a minute. So articulation wise, uh, you can see he's got two joints in the neck here, which work really, really well. Ball joint shoulders, elbows, and wrists. You got hips that move out. They move forward, and you can see this whole assembly back here does move in accordance with the hips. But they do not move back very far. Um, it's kind of tricky. you got knees and ankles, which is really great. This guy is super solid with all of his parts, and looks a little creepy with the mask creation. It's kind of interesting. But you also have, let's not forget, these do fold back if you want them down like that. But let's take a look at his mask grabbing gimmick. So first of all, you can see that his sheer size over Tahu, he's just a massive, massive set. Bigger than, taller than Grinder, a lot bulkier than anything else in this line so far. But anyways, as you can see, you take the claw here, you open it up, you grab the mask, and you can pull it off. Pretty simple, pretty effective, except when it runs into his own head. It's a pretty massive weapon, but it does work in mask grabbing. So overall, Ultimate Skull Grinder is pretty cool. I really, really like this combo build, and honestly, I'm tempted to buy two more sets to keep this permanent. This is a lot more impressive, I think, than the Slicing Bashing Skull Warrior, but they're both very good combo builds. But yes, this is definitely worth it if you are planning to pick up the Grinder and Akimu set, and you want to do something else, pick up a, a Scorpio and build this. This is a great, fun build to put together. And I gotta say, overall, with the combination models for this wave, these are a vast improvement over, let's just take the protector's weapons and give them to the Toa, or let's disassemble a protector and add it to the Toa's armor. 
this is a very great improvement and this is a neat thing to see because old Bionicle did this a lot where they'd offer combination models with waves and now we have those back in the form of these two. So overall I gotta say it was definitely worth putting these together. I will be disassembling them and putting them back into their original combinations in time, but I will leave them like this for a while because I think they look really, really cool overall and I am really happy with these combinations and hope that they do appear in the story. But let's take a look at the wave as a whole as we close out Bionicle Week, The Resurrection of Evil. So overall, how is Wave 2 of Bionicle, the summer 2015 wave? Well, I gotta say, I really do like the wave as a whole. It's a nice complement to Wave 1. Wave 1 was gigantic with 13 sets, and this is only 5, but we do get 6 figures. It just isn't as large or as grand as Winter 2015 was, and I feel like there are some pretty mediocre sets. I don't think Scorpio is that great. I think Slicer's got problems. Basher's pro Basher and Warrior are probably the best of the $15 range, but by far I think Skullgrinder and Akimu are the best set uh, set-wise, with Warrior being my second favorite and Basher being my third favorite. And then Slicer at fourth, Scorpio at fifth. Overall, it's a great wave to complement the previously existing Toa, and it's a good set of villains. I just wish there were two more, um, or at least one more, because Gali just does not have a villain. You can match up Tahu with, with Skull Grinder, but Gali doesn't really have a villain to match up. Kind of the reason I bought a second Skull Warrior, so we can all have a villain. But, alas, what do you do? I guess Gali just fights Lord of Skull Spiders, who fell off a cliff and we never saw him again. So, yeah. Anyways, that is it for Wave to the summer wave of Bionicle 2015, and I'm looking forward to seeing what next year provides. If the listings are true, it should be some interesting things. Overall, really excited, and stay tuned for the next Bionicle week sometime in January. Anyways, be sure to stay tuned here on Sandout 12 for three videos a week, Model Kit Monday on Monday, Sandout's Toy Chest, the Mystery Review Series on Thursday, and the Sandout Review on Saturday. And talks on the Sandout saying, goodbye.